guys, this is your host of Vamo Radio, Vanessa Morgan, and I'm here interviewing soul and dance music icon who voice defines an entire era of popular music, Alpha Anderson. Hi, Alpha. How are you? Hi, how are you? It's a pleasure to be with you, and I'm feeling wonderful today. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad to have you here on the show. So I know that many people may know you as one of the original lead vocalists in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominated group Chic. What was it like being a part of and working alongside a group of powerful musicians such as them? It was a wonderful experience. As a matter of fact, it's the experience that really has me here today. It's the mm -hmm. experience that has given me the longevity that I needed to be in the business as long as it was. But I have to tell you a funny story, an interesting mm -hmm. story. <laughs> I went actually to um, that first session. My good friend Luther Vandross called me and uh, said he had a session for me because Luther used to do a lot of sessions for people in New York and he would take me along, he would take other artists along, David Leslie, Diva Gray, Robin Clark, just so many others, Fonzie Thornton. And he says, I have a session that I'd like for you to do. I said, cool, mm -hmm. tell me about it. He says, I have a friend named Nile Rogers and he has just started this group called Chic. Mm -hmm. And he needs some background vocals, and I would like for you to go and, and sing. And I said, great. And he says, it's disco. <laughs> and I, I, I paused a moment. I said, disco? We've never done disco, Luther. We've always done R&B. He mm -hmm. says, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Wow. So, I, you know, when Luther asks you to do something, you don't say no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you do not say no to Luther Vandross, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> I went to the studio a little a little. I was a little, uh, I don't know, a little nervous about going there. Mm -hmm. But when I got there, I was introduced to uh, Bernard and Nile, and we were waiting for the other singers to come in. And the first thing Luther says is, where's the menu? I'm ready to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they ordered some food for us, and then later on, I heard that uh, Bernard Edwards pulled Nile Rogers to the side and looked at us and said, Nile. Are you sure these are the background singers you want <laughs> on this session? And so now says it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine because if I I was teaching um, at Hunter College at that time. Mm -hmm. So I uh, I pulled out my papers and I started marking papers. Luther was ordering food, and then David Lasley was there, very very shy, a incredible singer with this blonde hair down to his butt while we wow. were waiting for So we looked like a real motley crew. <laughs> And, uh, but when they put the music on, I heard dance, dance, dance. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is powerful. Wow. So that's the first thing I heard. Mm -hmm. And I heard music that was not your typical disco music. Mm -hmm. It was music that was quite different from what I expected it to be. It wasn't all four on the floor and 122 beats per minute or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, it was right. that they used at that time. It was totally different. The strings, the horn arrangements, I said, this is some very powerful stuff, and I would love to be a part of it. Wow. That is beautiful. I'm so glad you had that experience. That sounds amazing. Thanks, Vanessa. <laughs> You're welcome. It was. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alpha, how did you feel when working with big names such as musicians in the music industry, including Nile Rodgers, Quincy Jones, and Luther Vandross? One of the things that I learned, I learned from them. Once I got over the awe <laughs> of, of going, ah, oh, you know, because, I mean, when you look at somebody like Quincy Jones, I mean, I was a fan. And I didn't, what I learned, actually, from working with all three of them, one of, one of, the, things that the, thing, one of the things that they all have in common is that they very much have a vision, a very clear vision of who they are, and clarity of purpose, and very mm -hmm. professional. And mm -hmm. those are the things that I learned. For instance, from Luther, I learned the importance of vocals, of background vocals, of background singing. Luther, as a matter of fact, I can say, um, is really the co-creator of the chic vocal sound because a lot of the chic music was not mm -hmm. done with harmonies. It was unison singing. Okay. So it really took a lot for us to come together and blend our voices in such a way that we sounded like one person. That means wow. you have to hit the note at the same time, in the same place, you have to breathe the same time. So I learned that from him. From watching Quincy Jones, 
I saw that it was really, really, you have to be extremely organized to put a large group of people together, make them all feel like they're important, and make them all feel like they're in, um, bringing something to the table. This was the cast album for The Wiz, and there were so many singers there, and I'm saying, how is he going to do this? Because <laughs> it, ha it was a lot of singers. He handled it just like the professional that, that he is. You know, he made mm -hmm. everybody feel comfortable. He put out there what he wanted, and we just walked through it. And it was one of a, it was really a great experience for me. And from now, Rogers, I learned that it's always important to know what it is that you want. That is amazing. You know, mm -hmm. I also learned from him the importance sometimes, and we didn't really like it, but in retrospect, mm -hmm. this is how he and Bernard got their sound. Uh -huh. We didn't hear the songs prior to recording them. And that was unheard of, because you would always get a chance to hear the song. Sometimes you would get a chance to go in and do a demo. Mm -hmm. We would hear the song when we went into the studio. So we had no idea what we were in wow. for <laughs> when we went into the studio. Wow. And you just say, be here on this day at this time. You know, so right. you would get there, and sometimes they would still be writing. Wow, really? As a matter of fact, I have a piece of paper that I brought home from the studio in Bernard's handwriting for one of the songs that we were recording because he was still he was still working out lyrics. <laughs> so it's like it's like this was different, mm -hmm. but one of the things that it gave was uh, a spontaneity, uh -huh. and it made us become more professional. Made us pull together. I was nervous as heck, wow. knees shaking. You know, wow. sweating, stammering. <laughs> I understand. You know, definitely, <laughs> definitely not anything that I was used to. But it made me rise to the challenge. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that producers can do. That's a technique that producers can use. Mm -hmm. They can make you just rise to the challenge because the bottom line is that when a producer calls you in, you want to give them exactly what they want. Exactly. Yeah. Well, definitely. You want to give them your all really much. What you saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was wonderful. So those are three very important lessons that are, you know, still apropos. Most definitely. Most definitely, Alpha. And you know what? That was beautiful. I'm so glad that you shared that with us because that is a really cool moment that actually people see you from um, being on television or hearing your song, you know, one of the biggest albums ever, and then not knowing that you actually go through the same experiences the other artists encourage as well um, in today's time. Oh, absolutely. You know, someone said, I can't remember who, but they said that when you're nervous, it means that you still have respect for your audience. Most definitely, yeah. And you really want to do the best job that you can do, and you just learn how to channel that stuff. My knees don't knock as much as they used to, <laughs> <laughs> but I still get very, very nervous until I get out there and that first, those first notes are out. Right. Or that first, you know, I say something, then I get into it, then I flow into it. And, and as a matter of fact, at my last show, I just admitted it. You know, uh, my CD release party, I said, you know what, guys, I have a confession to make. And everybody, somebody, somebody said, no. And then everybody, <laughs> they went, because ah! <laughs> I know they thought they were going to hear some dirt. But I said, nice. <laughs> I am so nervous right now. It's been so long since I've been on stage. <laughs> you know, oh. I'm just really, really nervous. <laughs> But what that did was that it made me real for them, and that's what they were telling me. It made me appear like a real person to them. Yeah. And that just that just helped them to, like, then they really started pulling for me and then giving me all of that energy and all that love, and I was able to, to become a part of that energy and give it back to them. So Most definitely. being vulnerable and being honest and truthful is, is really important it is. to an artist because the audience picks up on that. Most definitely, yeah. It truly is, especially the audience. Um, oh, you know, yeah. You'll think they wouldn't pick up on it, but they do really quickly. They do. <laughs> they do. It's energy. It's, it's, on another, it's on another level. It's like on a level with dogs and only hear certain sounds. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. Just kidding. No. <laughs> not calling anybody a dog. Just trying to make an analogy, which probably is not a very good one. Oh. But energetics really can be felt. Yes. That's and it's just powerful energy going from person to person to person. And to be able to create that and ride in that and flow with that is wonderful. That is beautiful, Alpha. And all right, we're going to take a quick break with the interview from music icon Alpha Anderson. And we'll be back shortly here on Vamo Radio. 
And we are back here with the amazing Alpha Anderson. So Alpha, another question for you. So I know you had a lot of outstanding credentials and projects that you worked on, including the soundtrack with The Wiz that you mentioned earlier, as well as joining Chic on tour. Can you share your experiences and the process that you encountered during that time? Oh, those experiences sort of helped make me who I am today. Mm -hmm. um, the preparation, the rehearsal, Wow. The clothes, the hair, <laughs> the makeup, you know, mm -hmm. but always making sure that you go out and you give your best. One of the things that uh, when I worked with Luther, and he used to say this, and it was so true, he says, look, we don't mess with your ticket money. Right. You know, because you, you, ha you respect the people who take their time out and take, take their money and come to support you. And that was one of the things that I really, really loved uh, when I was on the road with Sheik because because we were named Sheik and because we had a different type of uh, fashion aesthetic, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't really want to do costumes. We really wanted to wear uh, designer clothes on mm -hmm. stage. And it just, it just warmed my heart when we would go out to places and the audience that came to our concerts 
dressed, you could tell that they put on their best to come to the concert. I appreciated that. That's the way they yeah. honored us. And I was very, very humbled by that. And the other thing that I loved about Chic mm -hmm. is that we brought people together. Oh, it was yeah. a very unifying thing. You know, it, mm -hmm. it was for me an experience to see black people and white people and Latino people and Asian people and old people and young people and gay people and straight people yeah. all in there singing our songs, cheering us on, and loving each other, you know, mm -hmm. heart to heart. That was one of the most powerful things that I experienced in my life. Because music is divine. Most definitely. And it does bring people together. So that experience, over and beyond the fact that I could get dressed up and put on these great clothes, but that I could sing and people could respond and they could feel that power. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I actually know a couple of people who have actually united um, from different races and different backgrounds over the music of Chic, which is actually amazing. I thought was beautiful when I seen it coming together. It was amazing. I'm like, wow, these people are very powerful. And it's just great how you can have such a great impact on people, you know, just everyday people. Right. And you don't even know it. Yeah. At the beginning, you don't know it because it's not like. It's not like you can sit down and say, okay, I'm going to write a song that's going to bring everybody together. Right. <laughs> I wish it were so. Right. <laughs> I wish it were so. Because I'd be writing now. But you do what you do, and you do what you do with love and passion, with honesty and truth and sincerity. And it strikes a chord with other people who are, who, who are looking for that. You know, when I went to, uh, we lost uh, an icon a couple of years ago, Nicholas Ashford, mm -hmm. who was one part of the sing -write, songwriting and performing duo Ashford and Simpson, mm -hmm. went to his memorial service. And one of the things someone said, because Nick wrote powerful lyrics, and he said, Nick wrote lyrics that were so powerful and so personal that I actually thought that I had written them. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's amazing. That is. That's beautiful. You know, um, Alpha, I know actually as being an artist um, with such a big name as yourself that it can be kind of challenging. So can you tell us what do you feel are the challenges that you face being such a well-known icon in the music industry? Well, you know, that's an interesting question because what I'm finding is that my voice is known more than my, more than my name or my face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that, that, and, that, and that's interesting because we did these songs so, so long ago before many people were even born. Right. <laughs> before many people were born, Vanessa. Don't you wait you know. ages now. <laughs> <laughs> but the songs still are heard all the time. So the songs are constantly being reintroduced. Mm-hmm. To new people, to new generations of people. And, of course, they're, Nile Rodgers and Sheik are currently touring, and they are awesome. They're absolutely fabulous. And they have two singers with them, Falami and Kim, who are mm -hmm. working with Nile, and the band is wonderful, and I love them. They are wonderful. Before them, there was Silver and some others. So they don't recognize my face so much and my name as being a part of it, but when they hear my voice. <laughs> so that's Somewhat of a challenge, you know. Okay. And the other thing, of course, is ageism. Yeah. You know, there's yeah, so many sure. isms, you yeah. know. You know, yeah. but ageism happens to be one of them. Mm -hmm. And yes, I'm a woman of a certain age, and I'm very happy about that. But I, I really understand. I really understand. I've gotten to the point to to understand that goddesses never age, yeah. and that you that you want to grow older. You want to add years to your life. But you don't want to be aged. You don't want to be decrepit. You don't want to be bowed down by it. You want to be able to age gracefully and appropriately. Yeah. And that's what I strive to do, you know, in my life. So, you know, if there are any challenges, so I can't do what I used to do. Mm hmm You know? I, ha yeah. I can do it differently. Yeah, it's true. I have to do it differently. So, um, yeah, the things I used to do when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I can't do them the same way, but my voice is still intact, and my body's yeah. still intact physically. I'm not talking. I mean, health-wise, I'm not talking about how I look. We all got a, we all got a little bit. We're, we're a little thicker than we. 
I know, well, right? a little bigger than we used to be. <laughs> Oh, Alpha, you are hilarious. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Alpha, um, actually, as you were saying, ageism, I do believe that is true. And as well, as I believe in the music industry, we need to understand also that with age comes more wisdom in our lives. And you become yeah. actually not just wisdom um, in general, but also with mm -hmm. music-wise. Actually, things that you used to do actually becomes um, ways that you can improve yourself. Which Absolutely. is beautiful. And I'm glad that you actually mentioned that to the audience so people can understand um, how to promote themselves as well as um, introducing themselves as a new version of themselves. Not the same version, but continuing on. Which yes. I love that. So that is beautiful. Yes. So Alpha, you. you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so are there any tips that you would like to give um, any inspiring artists of today? Oh, that's an interesting one. I think... One of the things that I would say is be true to who you are. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's a distinction between being an artist mm -hmm. and being a star. Yeah. You know, and, this, and neither one is wrong. Mm -hmm. But just be true to who you are. If you want to be a star, then prepare yourself to walk that path. If you want to be an artist, prepare yourself to walk that path. Understand that most times artists don't fare quite as well with, in the popular culture. Mm -hmm. But in the end, just be true to who you are and prepare for what you want to be. You know, practice your craft. I, you know, I still take voice lessons. Mm. Wow. Because I think it's really, really important for me to do that, to keep my voice intact. And I want to be the only person I ever compete with is me. <laughs> so I try, I try to be a better version of what I was before. Mm -hmm. So write and understand the business, but be very true to who, what, what does your heart say? What are you passionate about? And just follow that because understand that it is a lot, it is a lot of hard work. No matter which path you take, there will always be challenges challenges with everything and it is hard work and our job is to go up there and make it look like it's easy exactly <laughs> <laughs> and take people outside of themselves for a moment mm -hmm. and unite on a different plane take care of yourself physically you know a lot of people get into the the, the aura of what they think an artist is all about Right. But you can't do the things that you do if you're not taking care of yourself. Exactly. You've got to eat a certain way. You've got mm -hmm. to exercise. You, you've got to do all the things that make you be good. Now, all the hype that goes around it, all the press that goes around it, I don't believe half the things people say that, that people do on their off times. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Not if you're serious. Not if you're a serious artist. Exactly. That was most definitely, that was beautiful. And I love that you shared that with people who are actually today that are struggling to be who they are and who they want to be in this world and also trying to make a name for themselves. So that is beautiful. And I'm glad that you shared that with us. Thank you. Well, you have just heard it from the music icon, Alpha Anderson. Alpha, we thank you so much for being such a wonderful guest with us today. And we enjoyed having you here. Thanks, Vanessa. My pleasure. So my it, pleasure. I always love sharing my story, and and I love what Pose is doing in providing a platform for all of us independent artists, people who are out there that are not signed, but who still feel, feel passionate about what you do and love what you do and just want to do it and do it and do it, <laughs> <laughs> which is where we are right now. Thank you so much, Alpha. Is there anything you'd like to say to your fans before you go? Yes, I'd just like to thank you so much for your support. Um, I did a CD, my first solo CD, called Music From My Heart. It definitely does come from my heart. And one of the songs that I wrote that's my single now is called Perfectly Chic. It's been remixed by Ramit Records. Mm. So, and shout out to Ramit Records and shout out to Nene Music for making this interview possible. 
pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You can get you can get my CD on CD Baby and other digital platforms if you like. Because I know you guys don't do CDs. You you can tell how old school I am. I actually did made a CD, <laughs> but you can, you can you can download it and you can you can download it from uh, the other platforms. And if you want to be in touch with me, uh, you can check out my website. It's www.officialalphaanderson.com or on Facebook. Alpha Anderson, former Lady of Chic. My Twitter handle is at Alpha K Anderson. I would love to hear from you. Again, you guys, this has been music icon and Alpha Anderson. And also check out her newest release, Perfectly Chic, out now on CD Baby and most retail stores out there today online. This has been an interview with soul and dance music icon Alpha Anderson with your host of Vamo Radio, Vanessa Morgan. Signing off. For another day is almost here. Until the day, at least, you will say it's like the end of time when I know it comes to me.